In the United States, education is provided in public and private schools and by individuals through homeschooling. State governments set overall educational standards, often mandate standardized tests for K-12 public school systems and supervise, usually through a board of regents, state colleges, and universities. The bulk of the $1.3 trillion in funding comes from state and local governments, with federal funding accounting for about $260 billion in 2021 compared to around $200 billion in past years. Private schools are free to determine their own curriculum and staffing policies, with voluntary accreditation available through independent regional accreditation authorities, although some state regulation can apply. As of 2013, about 87% of school-age children attended state-funded public schools, about 10% attended tuition and foundation-funded private schools, and roughly 3% were homeschooled. Total expenditures for American public elementary and secondary schools amounted to $927 billion in 2020-21, in constant 2021-22 dollars. By state law, education is compulsory over an age range starting between 5 and 8 and ending somewhere between ages 16 and 19, depending on the state. This requirement can be satisfied in public or state-certified private schools, or an approved home school program. Compulsory education is divided into three levels, elementary school, middle or junior high school, and high school. Numerous publicly and privately administered colleges and universities offer a wide variety of post-secondary education. Post-secondary education is divided into college, as the first tertiary degree, and graduate school. Higher education includes public research universities, private liberal arts colleges, historically black colleges and universities, community colleges, for-profit colleges, and many other kinds and combinations of institutions. College enrollment rates in the United States have increased over the long term. At the same time, student loan debt has also risen to $1.5 trillion. The large majority of the world's top universities, as listed by various ranking organizations, are in the United States, including 19 of the top 25, and the most prestigious, Harvard University. The country placed first in the annual U.S. News & World Report Best Countries for Education Rankings. The U.S. has by far the most Nobel Prize winners in history, with 403, having won 406 awards. In 2010, the United States had a higher combined per-pupil spending for primary, secondary, and post-secondary education than any other OECD country, which overlaps with almost all of the countries designated as being developed by the International Monetary Fund and the United Nations, and the U.S. education sector consumed a greater percentage of the U.S. gross domestic product, GDP, than the average OECD country. In 2014, the country spent 6.2% of its GDP on all levels of education 1.0 percentage points above the OECD average of 5.2%. In 2018, primary and secondary per-pupil spending in the United States was 34% higher than the OECD average, ranking fifth of 36 countries reporting data, post-secondary per-pupil spending was double the OECD average, ranking second, and the U.S. education sector consumed 6% of the U.S. GDP, ranking 6th. From 1960 through 2017, per-pupil spending in public kindergartens, primary schools, and secondary schools increased in inflation-adjusted terms from $3,793 to $14,439. From 1950 through 2015, Student teacher and student non teaching staff ratios in public kindergartens, primary schools, and secondary schools declined from 27.5 students per teacher and 65 students per non teaching staff member in 1950 to 16.1 students per teacher and 16.1 students per non teaching staff member in 2015, with non teaching staffing increasing by 709 percent while teacher salaries declined by 2% in inflation-adjusted terms from 1992 to 2015. From 1976 to 2018, 
enrollment at post-secondary institutions increased by 78% and full-time faculty employed increased by 92%, while full-time administrators employed increased by 164% and other non-faculty staffing increased by 452%, and non-instructional spending increased by 48% from 2010 to 2018 while instructional spending increased by 17%. Enrollment in post-secondary institutions in the United States declined from 18.1 million in 2010 to 15.4 million in 2021, while enrollment in public kindergartens, primary schools, and secondary schools declined by 4% from 2012 to 2022 and enrollment in private schools or charter schools for the same age levels increased by 2% each. In 2014, the Economist Intelligence Unit rated U.S. education as 14th best in the world. The Program for International Student Assessment coordinated by the OECD currently ranks the overall knowledge and skills of American 15-year-olds as 19th in the world in reading literacy, mathematics, and science with the average American student scoring 495, compared with the OECD average of 488. In 2017, 46.4% of Americans aged 25 to 64 attained some form of post-secondary education. 48% of Americans aged 25 to 34 attained some form of tertiary education, about 4% above the OECD average of 44%. 35% of Americans aged 25 and over have achieved a bachelor's degree or higher. New England encouraged its towns to support free public schools funded by taxation. In the early 19th century, Massachusetts took the lead in education reform and public education with programs designed by Horace Mann that were widely emulated across the North. Teachers were specially trained in normal schools and taught the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic, and also history and geography. Public education was at the elementary level in most places. After the Civil War end in 1865, cities began building high schools. The South was far behind Northern standards on every educational measure and gave weak support to its segregated all-black schools. However, Northern philanthropy and Northern churches provided assistance to private black colleges across the South. Religious denominations across the country set up their private colleges. States also opened state universities, but they were quite small until well into the 20th century. In 1823, Samuel Reed Hall founded the first normal school, the Columbian School in Concord, Vermont, aimed at improving the quality of the burgeoning common school system by producing more qualified teachers. During Reconstruction, the United States Office of Education was created in an attempt to standardize educational reform across the country. At the outset, the goals of the office were to track statistical data on schools and provide insight into the educational outcomes of schools in each state. While supportive of educational improvement, the office lacked the power to enforce policies in any state. Educational aims across the states in the 19th century were broad, making it difficult to create shared goals and priorities. States like Massachusetts, with long established educational institutions, had well-developed priorities in place by the time the Office of Education was established. In the South and the West, however, newly formed common school systems had different needs and priorities. Competing interests among state legislators limited the ability of the Office of Education to enact change. In the mid-19th century, the rapidly increasing Catholic population led to the formation of parochial schools in the largest cities. Theologically oriented Episcopalian, Lutheran, and Jewish bodies on a smaller scale set up their own parochial schools. There were debates over whether tax money could be used to support them, with the answer typically being no. From about 1876, 39 states passed a constitutional amendment to their state constitutions, called Blaine Amendment after James G. Blaine, one of their chief promoters, forbidding the use of public tax money to fund local parochial schools. States passed laws to make schooling compulsory between 1852, Massachusetts, and 1917, Mississippi. 
They also used federal funding designated by the Morrill Land Grant Acts of 1862 and 1890 to set up land-grant colleges specializing in agriculture and engineering. By 1870, every state had free elementary schools, albeit only in urban centers. According to a 2018 study in the Economic Journal, states were more likely to adopt compulsory education laws during the age of mass migration, 1850 to 1914, if they hosted more European immigrants with lower exposure to civic values. Following Reconstruction the Tuskegee Normal and Industrial Institute was founded in 1881 as a state college, in Tuskegee, Alabama, to train colored teachers, led by Booker T. Washington, 1856 to 1915, who was himself a freed slave. His movement spread leading many other southern states to establish small colleges for colored or negro students entitled A. and M. Agricultural and Mechanical, or A. and T. Agricultural and Technical, some of which later developed into state universities. Before the 1940s, there were very few black students at private or state colleges in the North and almost none in the South. Responding to the many competing academic philosophies being promoted at the time, an influential working group of educators, known as the Committee of Ten and established in 1892 by the National Education Association, recommended that children should receive 12 years of instruction, consisting of eight years of elementary education, in what were also known as grammar schools, followed by four years in high school, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Gradually by the late 1890s, regional associations of high schools, colleges, and universities were being organized to coordinate proper accrediting standards, examinations, and regular surveys of various institutions in order to assure equal treatment in graduation and admissions requirements, as well as course completion and transfer procedures. By 1910, 72% of children were attending school. Between 1910 and 1940 the high school movement resulted in a rapid increase in public high school enrollment and graduations. By 1930, 100% of children were attending school, excluding children with significant disabilities or medical concerns. Private schools spread during this time, as well as colleges and, in the rural centers, land-grant colleges. In 1922, an attempt was made by the voters of Oregon to enact the Oregon Compulsory Education Act, which would require all children between the ages of 8 and 16 to attend public schools, only leaving exceptions for mentally or physically unfit children, exceeding a certain living distance from a public school, or having written consent from a county superintendent to receive private instruction. The law was passed by popular vote but was later ruled unconstitutional by the United States Supreme Court in Pierce v. Society of Sisters, determining that a child is not a mere creature of the state. This case settled the dispute about whether or not private schools had the right to do business and educate within the United States. By 1938, there was a movement to bring education to six years of elementary school, four years of junior high school, and four years of high school. During World War II, Enrollment in high schools and colleges plummeted as many high school and college students and teachers dropped out to enlist or take war-related jobs. The 1946 National School Lunch Act provided low-cost or free school lunch meals to qualified low-income students through subsidies to schools based on the idea that a full stomach during the day supports class attention and studying. The 1954 Supreme Court case Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas made racial desegregation of public elementary and high schools mandatory, although white families often attempted to avoid desegregation by sending their children to private secular or religious schools. In the years following this decision, the number of black teachers rose in the North but dropped in the South. In 1965, the Far-Reaching Elementary and Secondary Education Act ESEA, passed as a part of President Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty, provided funds for primary and secondary education, Title I funding. Title VI explicitly forbade the establishment of a national curriculum. 
Title IV of the Higher Education Act of 1965 created the Pell Grant Program which provides financial support to students from low-income families to access higher education. In 1975, the Education for All Handicapped Children Act established funding for special education in schools. The Higher Education Amendments of 1972 made changes to the Pell Grant. The 1975 Education for All Handicapped Children Act, AHA, required all public schools accepting federal funds to provide equal access to education and one free meal a day for children with physical and mental disabilities. The 1983 National Commission on Excellence in Education report, famously titled A Nation at Risk, touched off a wave of federal, state, and local reform efforts, but by 1990 the country still spent only 2% of its budget on education, compared with 30% on support for the elderly. In 1990, the AHA was replaced with the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, IDEA, which placed more focus on students as individuals, and also provided for more post-high school transition services. The No Child Left Behind Act of 2001, passed by a bipartisan coalition in Congress, provided federal aid to the states in exchange for measures to penalize schools that were not meeting the goals as measured by standardized state exams in mathematics and language skills. This made standardized testing a requirement. In the same year, the U.S. Supreme Court diluted some of the century-old Blaine laws upheld in Ohio law allowing aid to parochial schools under specific circumstances. The 2006 Commission on the Future of Higher Education evaluated higher education. In December 2015, then-American President Barack Obama signed legislation replacing No Child Left Behind with the Every Student Succeeds Act. 58. The Great Recession of 2007-2009 was caused a sharp decline in tax revenues in all American states and cities. The response included cuts to education budgets. Obama's $800 billion stimulus package of 2009 included $100 billion for public schools, which every state used to protect its education budget. In terms of sponsoring innovation, however, then-President Obama and then-Education Secretary Arne Duncan pursued K-12 education reform through the Race to the Top grant program. With over $15 billion of grants at stake, 34 states quickly revised their education laws according to the proposals of advanced educational reformers. In the competition, points were awarded for allowing charter schools to multiply, for compensating teachers on a merit basis including student test scores, and for adopting higher educational standards. There were incentives for states to establish college and career-ready standards, which in practice meant adopting the Common Core State Standards Initiative that had been developed on a bipartisan basis by the National Governors Association and the Council of Chief State School Officers. The criteria were not mandatory, they were incentives to improve opportunities to get a grant. Most states revised their laws accordingly, even though they realized it was unlikely they would win a highly competitive new grant. Race to the Top had strong bipartisan support, with centrist elements from both parties. It was opposed by the left wing of the Democratic Party, and by the right wing of the Republican Party, and criticized for centralizing too much power in Washington. Complaints also came from middle-class families, who were annoyed at the increasing emphasis on teaching to the test, rather than encouraging teachers to show creativity and stimulating students' imagination. Voters in both major parties have been critical of the Common Core initiative. During the 2010s, American student loan debt became recognized as a social problem. Like every wealthy country, the COVID-19 pandemic and Delta Akron hybrid variant had a great impact on education in the United States, requiring schools to implement technology and transition to virtual meetings, although the use of technology improves the grading process and the quality of information received, critics assess it a poor substitute for in-person learning, and that online-only education disadvantages students without internet access, who disproportionately live in poor households. And that technology may make it harder for students to pay attention. Some colleges and universities became vulnerable to permanent closure during the pandemic. 
universities and colleges were refunding tuition monies to students while investing in online technology and tools, making it harder to invest into empty campuses. Schools are defined as being in low financial health if their combined revenue and unrestricted assets will no longer cover operating expenses in six years. Before COVID-19, 13 institutions were in danger of closing within six years in New England. With the presence of COVID-19, that number has increased to 25 institutions. In the United States due to the financial impact caused by COVID-19, 110 more colleges and universities are now at risk of closing. This labels the total number of colleges and universities in peril due to pandemic to be 345 institutions. While prestigious colleges and universities have historically had financial cushion due to high levels of enrollment, private colleges at a low risk have dropped from 485 to 385. Federal COVID-19 relief has assisted students and universities. However, it has not been enough to bandage the financial wound created by COVID-19. Colby Sawyer College located in New Hampshire has received about $780,000 in assistance through the United States Department of Education. About half of this money was dispersed amongst the student body. Colby Sawyer College was also capable of receiving a loan of $2.65 million to avoid layoffs of their 312 employees. Yale economist Fabrizio Zilabadi co-authored a January 2022 study with professors from the Columbia University New York University, University of Pennsylvania, Harvard University, Northwestern University and the University of Amsterdam, showing that the pandemic is widening educational inequality and that the learning gaps created by the crisis will persist. As a result, COVID-19 educational impact in the United States has ended by March 11, 2022, as Delta Akron cases fall and ahead of the living with an endemic phase. Early childhood teaching in the U.S. relates to the teaching of children, formally and informally, from birth up to the age of eight. The education services are delivered via preschools and kindergartens. Preschool, sometimes called pre-kindergarten or junior kindergarten, refers to non-compulsory classroom-based early childhood education. The Head Start program is a federally funded early childhood education program for low-income children and their families founded in 1965 that prepares children, especially those of a disadvantaged population, to better succeed in school. However, limited seats are available to students aspiring to take part in the Head Start program. Many community-based programs, commercial enterprises, non-profit organizations, faith communities, and independent child care providers offer preschool education. Preschool may be general or may have a particular focus, such as arts education, religious education, sports training, or foreign language learning, along with providing general education. In the United States, preschool programs are not required, but they are encouraged by educators. Only 69% of four-year-old American children are enrolled in preschool. Preschool age ranges anywhere from three to five years old. The curriculum for the day will consist of music, art, pretend play, science, reading, math, and other social activities. The U.S. is governed by federal, state, and local education policy. Education is compulsory for all children, but the age at which one can discontinue schooling varies by state and is from 14 to 18 years old. Free public education is typically provided from kindergarten, ages 5 and 6, to 12th grade, ages 17 and 18. Around 85% of students enter public schooling while the remainder are educated through homeschooling or privately funded schools. Schooling is divided into primary education, called elementary school, and secondary education. Secondary education consists of two phases in most areas, which includes a middle-slash-junior high school and high school. Higher education in the United States is an optional final stage of formal learning following secondary education, often at one of the 4,495 colleges or universities and junior colleges in the country. In 2008, 36% of enrolled students graduated from college in four years. 
57% completed their undergraduate requirements in six years, at the same college they first enrolled in. The U.S. ranks 10th among industrial countries for percentage of adults with college degrees. Over the past 40 years the gap in graduation rates for wealthy students and low-income students has widened significantly. 77% of the wealthiest quartile of students obtained undergraduate degrees by age 24 in 2013, up from 40% in 1970. 9% 9 of the least affluent quartile obtained degrees by the same age in 2013, up from 6% in 1970. There are over 7,000 post-secondary institutions in the United States offering a diverse number of programs catered to students with different aptitudes, skills, and educational needs. Compared with the higher education systems of other countries, post-secondary education in the United States is largely deregulated, giving students a variety of choices. Common admission requirements to gain entry to any American university requires a meeting a certain age threshold, high school transcript documenting grades, coursework, and rigor of core high school subject areas as well as performance in AP and IB courses, class ranking, ACT or SAT scores, extracurricular activities, an admissions essay, and letters of recommendation from teachers and guidance counselors. Other admissions criteria may include an interview, personal background, legacy preferences, family members having attended the school, ability to pay tuition, potential to donate money to the school development case, evaluation of student character, based on essays or interviews, and general discretion by the admissions office. While universities will rarely list that they require a certain standardized test score, class ranking, or GPA for admission, each university usually has a rough threshold below which admission is unlikely. The traditional path to American higher education is typically through a college or university, the most prestigious forms of higher education in the United States. Universities in the United States are institutions that issue bachelor's, master's, professional, or doctorate degrees, colleges often award solely bachelor's degrees. Some universities offer programs at all degree levels from the associate to the doctorate and are distinguished from community and junior colleges where the highest degree offered is the associate degree or a diploma. Though there is no prescribed definition of a university or college in the United States, universities are generally research-oriented institutions offering undergraduate, graduate, and professional programs. American universities come in a variety of forms that serve different educational needs. Some counties and cities have established and funded four-year institutions. Some of these institutions, such as the City University of New York, are still operated by local governments. Others such as the University of Louisville and Wichita State University are now operated as state universities. Four-year institutions may be public or private colleges or universities. Private institutions are privately funded and there is a wide variety in size, focus, and operation. Some private institutions are large research universities, while others are small liberal arts colleges that concentrate on undergraduate education. Some private universities are nonsectarian and secular, while others are religiously affiliated. As of 2023, nine U.S.-based universities and colleges rank among the world's top 20 universities and colleges, according to the QS World University Rankings. The nine are, MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, ranked first in the world, Stanford University in Stanford, California, ranked third, Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, ranked fifth, California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, ranked sixth, University of Chicago in Chicago, ranked tenth, University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, ranked 13th, Princeton University in Princeton, New Jersey, ranked 16th, Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, ranked 18th, and Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, ranked 20th. Other types of universities in the United States include liberal arts schools, Reed College, Swarthmore College, Barnard College, religiously affiliated and denomination universities, DePaul University, Brigham Young University, Yeshiva University, 
Military, United States Military Academy, United States Merchant Marine Academy, United States Naval Academy, Art and Design Schools, Berkeley College of Music, Juilliard School, Fashion Institute of Technology, Parsons School of Design, Rhode Island School of Design, Historically Black Colleges and Universities, Morehouse College, Howard University Kentucky State University, and for-profit universities, University of Phoenix, Western International University, Liberty University. 127 While most private institutions are non-profit, a growing number in the past decade have been established as for-profit. The American university curriculum varies widely depending on the program and institution. Typically, an undergraduate student will be able to select an academic major or concentration, which comprises the core main or special subjects, and students may change their major one or more times. Some students, typically those with a bachelor's degree, may choose to continue on to graduate or professional school, which are graduate and professional institutions typically attached to a university. Graduate degrees may be either master's degrees, example MA, MS, MSW, professional degrees, e.g. MBA, JD, MD, or doctorate degrees, e.g. PhD. Programs range from full-time, evening, and executive which allows for flexibility with students' schedules. Academia-focused graduate school typically includes some combination of coursework and research, often requiring a thesis or dissertation to be written, while professional graduate-level schools grants a first professional degree. These include medical, law, business, education, divinity, art, journalism, social work, architecture, and engineering schools. Community and junior colleges in the United States are public comprehensive institutions that offer a wide range of educational services that generally lasts two years. Community colleges are generally publicly funded, usually by local cities or counties, and offer career certifications and part-time programs. Though it is cheaper in terms of tuition, less competitive to get into, and not as prestigious as going to a four-year university, they form another post-secondary option for students seeking to enter the realm of American higher education. Community and junior colleges generally emphasize practical career-oriented education that is focused on a vocational curriculum. Though some community and junior colleges offer accredited bachelor's degree programs, community and junior colleges typically offer a college diploma or an associate degree such as an AA, AS, or a vocational certificate, although some community colleges offer a limited number of bachelor's degrees. Community and junior colleges also offer trade school certifications for skilled trades and technical careers. Students can also earn credits at a community or junior college and transfer them to a four-year university afterward. Many community colleges have relationships with four-year state universities and colleges or even private universities that enable some community college students to transfer to these universities to pursue a bachelor's degree after the completion of a two-year program at the community college. A few charity institutions cover all of the students' tuition, although scholarships, both merit-based and need-based, are widely available. Generally, private universities charge much higher tuition than their public counterparts, which rely on state funds to make up the difference. Libraries have been considered essential to educational goals. Library books are more readily available to Americans than to people in Germany, the United Kingdom, France, the Netherlands, Austria, and all the Mediterranean nations. The average American borrowed more library books in 2001 than his or her peers in Germany, Austria, Norway, Ireland, Luxembourg, France, and throughout the Mediterranean. Americans buy more books than Europeans do. Thank you for watching this video.